Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to almost instantaneously calibrate an Abacus linear viscoelastic material model to DMA data that I have. So here's the data. I have a file here. It's an experimental file. It contains five columns, strain, uh, mean strain, strain amplitude, frequency, storage modulus, and loss modulus. And uh, I'm going to open M calibration. Here is a, bl a, br a brand new window. I'm going to read in this experimental data in the DMA form. So I set uh, load case type, uh, uh, the dynamic data. Here it is. Then I need to load my file. It's called D8 here, and I read it in. Then I have to make sure that the columns are correct here, and they are. So I say OK. And uh, that's really the all set up here. Now I'm using M calibration version 6.2. And in this version, and uh, you see that there's a new option here called use a direct frequency domain solver. And you want to make sure this is active uh, because it makes the calibration almost instantaneous. Uh, I just going to make sure the plot style is better. The default setting here is to have red for experimental and red for predicted. I'm going to change the predicted to be blue so I can see the difference better. Here it is. Now, I need to set up my graph so we can see the data. Uh, right now, it's plotting stress and strain, but we need to change it to be DMA type data. So on the x-axis, I want to plot uh, frequency and radians per second. I want it to be on the log scale. On the y-axis, I'm going to plot uh, storage modulus. Okay. In this graph, I'm going to pick uh, the same thing almost. I'm going to say x-axis, frequency, radians per second. I want log scale. And the y-axis, I want to be loss modulus. And here it is. So we see we have a very wide range of frequencies. Uh, the storage modulus goes from a low value and then plateaus up at a high value. The loss modulus has a peak in the middle of this transition, as you typically see. So this is the experimental data. And now I'm going to show you how you can calibrate an abacus linear viscoelasticity model to this data. So I have set material model. I'm going to scroll down to the abacus section. I'm going to pick abacus hyperelastic viscoelastic. Um, it doesn't really matter what hyperelastic model we pick here because it's small strain data. If we had additional data, we could also calibrate the large strain response at the same time. You can combine any types of experiments at the same time using M calibration. I'm going to pick a rid of voice uh, for no particular reason. And it says five prony series terms, but this version of M calibration looks at the data and it asks me if I want to change that. It says set the prony series terms based on the provided experimental data. And that's what I want to do. Uh, it will actually change the number of prony series terms to be, in this case, 30 of them in order to, uh, to match the domain of frequencies that we have here. And it also is very smart now about looking at the default guess. The default guess of these parameters, uh, if we click run once, you'll see that it's almost a perfect guess from the start. In fact, it doesn't look like you almost have to calibrate this. We will show you how you calibrate it anyway. Um, this is almost instantaneous, as you can see. It just does that. The other thing that I want to point out that um, when you run DMA data in previous versions, it was relatively slow to run it. It ran it in time domain. This new version of M calibration does this in a different way, and it's almost instantaneous. So if I click run once, you'll see that it does the whole update in a fraction in, in some uh, 36 millisecond, milliseconds in this case. So very, very quick. Um, we can try to optimize this further if we like. Uh, to do that, I'm going to click Run Calibration. I'm going to use Extensive Automatic. I'm going to use Repeat It. So this will be thousands of iterations. And uh, I'll just set, say it the way it is here. Say OK. And it's running this for us now. Let me just wait a few more seconds. And there it's done. So see, uh, it ran 2,997 guesses. It took seven seconds. And the fit uh, did get significantly better from about 5% error down to 1% error. So this was obviously a very quick calibration. Once we're done with this now, we can export this to a Abacus uh, finite element program. So I yes, export it as an IMP file or CAE script. It's going to demonstrate the IMP file option. It's going to just call it untitled and save it right here. And then I can go here and we can look at this file. This is the file that was generated. It has all the information that we need. And we can just plug that into Abacus. Um, so 
that's all of my demonstration. I uh, hope you saw how quick they can be, how fast this calibration can be uh, when you have this type of data. If you have any questions, head over to polymerfm.com and I'll answer them there. Thank you.